The re-election of Governor Yahya Bello in November 16, 2019 was fought from the lower to the apex court by the candidates of People's Democratic Party and Social Democratic Party. On July 4, 2020, the Court of Appeal in Abuja upheld Governor Bello's re-election. But PDP and SDP governorship candidates still fought the judgment seeking for redress at the Supreme Court. Victory came the way of Governor Yahya Bello on 31st August 2020, as the Supreme Court dismissed two separate appeals that challenged his re-election. The appeals were lodged against the outcome of the governorship election that held in the state in November 16, 2019 by the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and its candidate, Musawada, and as well as the Social Democratic Party, SDP, and his own candidate, Natasha Aboti. In different unanimous judgments, a seven-man panel of justice of the APS court, led by the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Ibrahim Tanko, held that both appeals lacked merit. Why the lead verdict in the case of the People's Democratic Party and his candidate Musawada was prepared by Justice Iyank Okoro, that of the Social Democratic Party and his candidate Natasha Koti was prepared and read by Justice Unwani Abba Aji. As the Supreme Court announced its judgment, the members of the All Progressives Congress, the governor, and the people celebrated. <laughs> The learned lawmakers and dignitaries reacted. Our leader is Excellency Elijah Ayadoza Bello, the one I deputize, has never been distracted. If for anything, one thing I've learned from him is focus. So he's been focused from the get-go. And um, we just knew that this was a phase that would come and go. Now that he's gone, just like he has always said, all citizens of Kogi State, well-meaning progressive citizens of Kogi State, across all divides, based on political platform, should come together, support the government of His Excellency Alaji Ayadoza Bello, who is today the governor of Kogi State and the leader of the state, so that he can fulfill all the promises that he had given to the people of Kogi State, which is to do much more than he did in the first four years. Uh, I've learned a new jurisprudence today that you can abandon your pleading in your brief of argument, not at the trial court, even when evidence is left. So as a student of jurisprudence, I've learned a new thing today. The judgment is first and foremost very, very sound. Uh, there was a lot of industry uh, a lot of scholarship and a lot of erudition that went into the delivery of the judgment. But bottom line, the judgment is the confirmation of the will of the good people of Kogi State, which they expressed on the 16th of November 2019. We are all highly delighted that uh, the Supreme Court reaffirm the victory, the election that uh, gave our governor the second time. To thank God for the consistency of the of the judiciary. Uh, you recall that um, both the Senate election and the governorship election took place the same day. Now, in the court of appeal, 70 out of 73 witnesses that PDP brought to the court affirmed that the election was free and fair. So we're not expecting anything different from here. Because it's the same election the same day. Now, what the PDP did during the election was to get films of riots in time past and place it to mis uh, misinform the world that the election in Kogi was not free, was not fair. These were clips of riots in, in, in other places. Not even, not, not, not even in Kogi State. Just to mislead people. We want to thank the judiciary for their tenacity, 
for taking pains. If you listen to the judgment, they said the, the petitioners came just on the academic exercise and that all the allegations lack merit. They didn't even have evidence of anybody coming to stand that the election was not free and fair, that the election was rigged. Now, they generalized their allegations. They said crimes were committed. By who? In law, you don't generalize crime, criminal activities. You must be specific. So we want to thank God that we have judiciary that is very, very credible. And we thank God that more than ever before, we now have a leader in our state, our governor, who our people, the people of Kogi State, believe in his leadership, and they have affirmed that. In the immortal words of uh, William Shakespeare, all is well that ends well. This has been a protected legal battle from uh, December now. We have concurrent decisions of uh, the trial tribunal and uh, the court of appeal being affirmed by the Supreme Court today in Wada's appeal. What the court in dismissing the appeal said is that the law improving whether you want an election by majority of lawful votes has not changed. It still remains the law. You must bring cogent and credible evidence. And the election petitions are not fought on sentiment, but by clear and cogent evidence. You could see that the Supreme Court today, in deciding the case, said they needed to bring people who were at those polling units to give life to the documents they brought. Most of the documents brought were not spoken to by the makers of those documents. And even the expert evidence, the court held that there was no pleading to support that particular evidence of PW19 because they have abandoned those two grounds of the petition with border on corrupt practices and non-compliance. So you cannot use facts pleaded in support of non-compliance and corrupt practices to establish majority of lawful votes. The court has restated, this was stated in the, the Kano election petition, the national election petition, Caprice case, and now it has been affirmed by the Supreme Court that you cannot do that. So all in all, the court held that this was a case where the evidence brought before the trial, 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 trial tribunal could not support the petition and the court accordingly dismissed it. While in the other petition, the court also held that the allegations of qualification, non-qualification against Alaji Ayabelo and uh, Edward Onoja, the deputy governor, governor, and gov deputy governor of the Kogi state, were not established. They were not able to bring evidence to contradict the, their form CF01, which they submitted to INEC. So the court uh, didn't hesitate to dismiss that allegation. And on similar to what happened in PDP, there was no cogent evidence to prove the allegation of corrupt practices and uh, non-compliance, particularly the allegation that their name and logo was not on the ballot. The court said that at least one would have expected them to have brought the ballot papers to show that their name and logo is not there, but they didn't do that. And uh, they also needed to bring witnesses to, uh, to bring forth their allegations. So in the end, we are happy with both judgments. They are an enrichment to our electoral jurisprudence, and it still shows that the law remains the law, and the law is devoid of sentiment. Indication that there is hope for Nigerian democratic uh, development. As you can see, the people of Ijumu local government, people of Kogi West Senatorial District, Kogi State at large, came out in mass to exercise their franchise in voting massively for His Excellency Governor Yaya Dozabelo. Go to Ijumu local government now, see people killing cows, rams, celebrating this very victory. And uh, thank God, this can be bestly described as amalgamation of justice, fairness, credibility at its peak. So, and uh, a reflection of people's uh, uh, wishes. So, I congratulate His Excellency Governor Yaya Dozabelo. I congratulate His Excellency uh, Deputy Governor David uh, Edward Onoja, the distinguished Senator Smart Adeyemi. The elated Governor Bello spoke. For me, my family, and indeed the good people of Kogi State. However, we lost one of our own, our father. Dr. Michael Ame Oboni II, the immediate past attire of Igala. He has joined his ancestor, and very soon he's, joined, he's going to join the forebearers that stood. He was a great leader, a father, who gave us all the necessary support before we came on board and in this administration. He's a unifier. He's a man with so much respect and revered. We're going to miss him. We love him, but we know that God Almighty loves him most. We're consoled and condoled by the fact that he has left and lived a legacy behind, 
a life worthy of emulation. We're going to miss him, but he has always reiterated that we should continue to do our best in uniting the good people of Kogi State. I will continue to do my best to ensure that across the divide and across the party line, we continue to unite the great state of Kogi. And the people will continue to benefit and feel the dividend of democracy. I thank the judiciary, starting from the tribunal to appeal and to the Supreme Court, who have seen through and have actually interpreted the fact and the law as it is. I call on each and every one of you to please join me in delivering and doing more for the people of Kogi State. In this particular pronouncement of the Supreme Court today, I state that there is no victor, no vanquish. We only tested what the law and fact is before the court. They have spoken, and I know that you will join me in making sure that we unite the state. The atmosphere of Thanksgiving was clearly in the air across Kogi State after Monday, August 31st, Supreme Court judgment upholding Governor Jai Abelou's victory at the November 2019 governorship election, especially in his hometown, Okeni, as he paid a visit to his immediate constituency in recognition of the support he has enjoyed from the people. It was a weekend to remember for Governor Bello and his kinsmen. On Friday, September 4th, Governor Bello arrived Okene along the highway and adjoining streets between the state capital Lokoja and Governor Bello's hometown. People trooped out in large numbers to identify with Governor Yahya Bello and his moment of triumph. <laughs> Nambelo attended Jumat prayer at the Central Mosque Okene, where the chief Imam Salihu Aber declared Governor Bello's triumph as evidence of God's faithfulness to Ibera people, in particular in Kogi State at large. <laughs> Governor Bello thank God for the victory and appreciated the people. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And uh, Libya, and I saw the name. And I saw the name. And I saw the name. And I saw the name.
After the prayer, pay to homage to the Ohino of Ibiro land, His Royal Majesty Ado Ibrahim, in his palace, where he laid out his second term agenda. It is not by our making, it is not by our minds, but it is just by the special grace of God Almighty. Let Prince Abubakar Audu, may God continue to be pleased with him, and may his soul continue to rest in peace. The tone back to God Almighty and brought me on board. He had a vision for the state. We didn't abandon that vision. The vision of ensuring that project talks round to this state and uniting the state. It coincides with our own vision of uniting for this state and bringing us together and bringing developmental projects and programs to both states. And today, by the special grace of God, we are back once again. May this wonderful celebration, accomplishment, never depart us in our lifetime. Tohinoi prayed for the governor's continued success, describing his re-election as no surprise, saying the foundation for his re-election was laid during his first tenure of office. On Saturday, 5th of September, there was no escaping the crowd for governor, even at his GRW Okene residence, as people from all walks of life trooped out in large numbers to welcome him with song and dance. Chairman of the ruling All Progressives Congress APC in the States, Abdullahi Bello, was also part of the jubilant crowd. He held the Supreme Court judgment in Governor Bello's favor, describing it as a victory for the governor, the party, and the people of the state, as it has paved the way for another four years of good governance. It's just uh, to affirm the position of the people who gave His Excellency or who renewed his mandate. For second time. His Excellency Elijah Ayadoza Bello is a man of the people. He's a crowd puller. Of course, he's, uh, he is uh, a grassrooter, and uh, people believe in him because even before he became he, he became the governor of the state, he has empowered a lot of people in his uh, community, Okene here, and they so much believe in him, and that they came out to show in the last election. So I'm not surprised seeing the kind of crowd that has been turning now since the pronouncement of Supreme Court. Uh, they are just encouraging him to do more. Others, however, were quick to point out to Governor Bello that his rescue mission in Kogi State is not yet over. By the grace of God, Elijah Adiza Bello will never let us down and we too will never let him down because he has been doing so much well for us. He has done tremendously well for the good people of Kogi State. I want to assure them that our leader his Excellency, the governor I know, will continue to do more for the betterment of Kogi State. And uh, I want to urge them to continue in their prayers and good wishes for His Excellency so that he can deliver more good dividends of democracy. I trust his you know, uh, capability. That is why he was given a bulk vote 
not only in, uh, in uh, Kogi Central, but Kogi East and Kogi West. Everybody is happy. You can look, you can see what is happening down there. Everybody is elated because he, we know that he's going to deliver. And this is the time for him to deliver his promises. No more hitches, no more fight, no more quarrel, no more. He's going to be friendly with everybody. And so he's going to take Kogi to an enviable height because we know Kogi, as far as Kogi is, it is, it is a transit city. And transit city in any country does not suffer. Therefore, we want to make Kogi a very developed state. I make a passionate appeal to the opposition parties in Kogi State to kindly rally around this government so that this government will continue to succeed. And uh, His Excellency has said it uh, time with time number that uh, the, the victory is that no victor, no vanquish, and that all Kogites, the victory is for all Kogites, irrespective of your tribe, religion, or ethnic or political differences. I believe God in his infinite mercy that brought him to this land with so many purposes. This is the one of the purposes that he brought this great person to our, our land. You see, when you imagine what happened before he got to this post, you know it's not just ordinary person. Allah has ordained him that he's going to leave this land. He's going to bail out this land. This is Kogi for us. We don't have any other state. You should throw away the political differences, throw away their personal differences or their personal interests and join this regime. They have a lot to contribute if actually they love Kogi State. The Saturday fiesta at Okene also included a cultural display by different masquerades from across Iberia land. <laughs> performance is more than just an ordinary display as it has some traditional significance. It's a very wonderful day because this marks our victory at the Supreme Court that all of us are jubilating and celebrating with His Excellency, the People's Governor. And we are very happy for what we are seeing today. And I'm happy that his people, which is the Bura people, Bura Nation, they are strongly behind their son, our father, our, God, our political godfather, and we hope this will continue. I think it's the excitement of the whole program that when the masquerade comes out, it flogs and everybody believes when the masquerade is holding a stick and it touches you, it's to them, yeah, to those who the masquerade were beating, it's like a blessing to them that they are having more power plus power. So it's just culture, that's law. The cultural witness of today's occasion, one, one should be able to identify where he has come from. Two, what are the do's and don'ts of where you come from? Three, what are the things left behind by the ancestors to your own time? That's exactly what we are displaying today. That masquerade is part of our culture. Masquerade, entertainment, is part of Ibra culture. And we feel it is so important, very nice, like the son of the soil, our own son, His Excellency Elijah Yadot Abilo, who has been very, very lucky to sail through the court. The judgment is in his favor, in the favor of the black people, and also in the favor of Kogi State. So the only first thing we have to welcome him with is with the traditional festival, the traditional uh, entertainment, which is, we call it eco-culture. This is something that you cannot explain in words. 
If you see the celebration, you can see words are not enough to express the innermost feeling that everybody here today is feeling. The court judgment alone has salvaged the entire co guides. Why? This is something that we all crave for for a very long time. Why do we crave for it? It's because His Excellency Governor Yahaya Adosa Bello is a man of the people. And for long, we have waited for this kind of person that will unite the Kogi state, whereby the agenda will be that everybody is a Kogai. And from his first tenor, you can see that he did that perfectly by making sure every tribe in Kogi state is represented in his government. I'm very happy that our brother is a, is a governor today. Our daddy, our brother, our humble, our authentic man. A child of a good around. I'm very happy for him. Even I can't express myself how I'm happy. And on Sunday the 7th, Governor Yahyabelu and his entourage attended the oldest church in Okene, Christ the King Catholic Church, to offer praises and thanks to God for the series of judicial victories that upheld his re-election as the state's chief executive. In line with his message, promoting unity and religious harmony, Governor Bello said his Christian sisters and brothers needed to be part of the Thanksgiving. He also told those present at the Thanksgiving at the church is the fulfillment of the pledge he made during his election campaign tour. My brothers and sisters, it is not a long speech, but I think it is just equitable that when you see God's face and hands in your sources and in gratitude, you just have to be talk back to God and appreciate Him. Join me to appreciate God. Join the rest of the citizens of Kogi State to appreciate God. And join me to appreciate the wonderful people of Kogi State who threw power their mass to give all their Governor Bello called on the members of the clergy to join his administration to preach the message of peace, love, and togetherness. My administration shall not segregate whether a Muslim or a Christian, whether you are a Biraman or an Igala or an Oku, whether you are old or young, whether you are rich or poor. We are going to serve and lead with the fear of Almighty God. We are going to be fair, we are going to be just, we are going to be equitable. And by the grace of God, we are going to ensure that we build more on the unity and togetherness of Kogi State like never before. The Reverend Father John Mary Ezekiel Awalumate who delivered the homely at the service, had words of commendation, encouragement, and advice for the governor. What the opposition firm have given to us, even myself, head president, have given me the grace to be a watchman. And I want to have the qualities of a watchman. A one who is disciplined, a one who is able to sacrifice for the sake of those who need to work for with my prayer for you wish out to them. That God will give you the grace to be that much man who will be able to sacrifice himself for the sake of the people. Who will be disciplined. Reverend Father Awolumate used the occasion to seek the governor's support towards the empowerment of a physically challenged mother of three, Khadijat Idrisu, who has been under the care of the Christ the King Church. 
Nabilo wasted no time in granting the clergyman's request. By the power that God has offered me today as the executive of the city, I like this change for you. The mother of three, Kadijat Idrisu, was overwhelmed and thanked Governor Bello for his good gesture. Governor Bello then offered his sacrifices of praise to God and the people joined him. This was the cap on what most definitely was a victorious homecoming, not only for Governor Yahyabelu, but also for his kinsmen as they all had real reasons to celebrate. <laughs> From the office of the senior special assistant to the governor on electronic media, click on our YouTube channel, Confluence Chronicles, to get update of the government activities.